Good morning, getting run number one in the books for the day, and then we're going to go back for another run later this afternoon, talking about doubles today and marathon training. It's cold out. We're all bundled up, ready to, actually, here's my gloves. I'm going to zip up the jacket and get going. So, doubles. Man, it's a big topic. We actually have talked about doubles before, but I think it's been maybe nine months ago. I'll try to remember to put it at the end of the blog in case you want to go check that out. But this is a little more refined of a discussion because uh, I now have two marathons under my belt and this will be my third getting ready for the Houston Marathon. And I feel like I'm, a, I'm dialing in the training for marathons and not just mountains and marathons as we get ready for the streets of Houston. Okay, see you in about an hour and 15 minutes, approximately. And I'm back. All right, first run was 10 miles, about 7.30 a mile. Felt great. Took out the Asics Glide Ride once again. And now, yes, I am icing my knees. So remember, uh, gosh, what, two days ago we talked about runner's knees. So, you know, um, just doing as much research as possible. It does feel better, I must say, when I ice it. Now, I did also read that uh, you shouldn't be heating it but it does feel pretty amazing when I ice it and then heat it and then alternate back and forth. So I know there's a lot of different theories out there, but that's what I'm doing. And yes, it is time now to foam roll before the second run today. So I'm going to be doing 13 to 14 miles on the second run. As you can tell, the sun is setting quickly. Uh, actually, the shortest day of the year is right around the corner. So uh, I got to get this done uh, pretty quick here. And then we'll go into the studio and talk about doubling, uh, why I double for marathon training, and just, um, gosh, different theories that are out there around this topic. Um, I'll also give my opinion on who should maybe not be doubling because it is intense and it's, you know, it's no joke. And it does put a lot of, um, I would say if your body is not ready for it, it's best to stay away from doubling. But there, I believe there is a place for it um, in certain certain circumstances in the running world. So there you go, just gonna foam roll, try and get the body as right as possible before getting these second, uh, second run in here. Hi, Michael. Hi. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Marathon training with doubles. So the second run today, 13 miles. I just checked about seven minutes a mile, a little under. So feeling good, feeling smooth. I forgot to bring the Asics glide rides and set them right here for all of you. They are going to be appearing many, many times between now and Houston on Strava as the shoe that I choose. 
so much so I'm tempted to get a second pair. Like they are just, I don't know, now they're heavy. And I actually like that. It's a little bit of my hidden strategy. You guys know this, that I'm not afraid to train with a heavier shoe because when I put that racer on, it's like, oh, it's, it's that much sweeter. It's that, it's that much lighter. My legs feel like I can turn over that much faster. So I checked my cadence again. It's all data from the watch, but it was 183 today. So I have heard, so I'm going to try and not belabor the point of my knee too, too much, but real quick. The first run today eh, didn't feel so good. Second run felt amazing. In fact, I don't, I mean, maybe I felt it once during the run. The rest of the time, it was at a pain scale of zero. Now, what did I do? Ice and heat, ice and heat. Back and forth for about an hour before the run and then I'm doing it after the run as well. Uh, now, I, I realize this is just treating the symptom and not necessarily curing the tracking issue of the kneecap and the patella tendon but as you know time is of the essence i can't exactly just hang out and not do any training and let this knee calm down right now so if i can train through this with this knee pain with a little bit of uh heat and ice um heat and ice i'm gonna do it and i also was doing some pretty good uh solid um foam rolling today with the trigger point. So that's the blue one that I have. You actually, you saw me doing it. So those ridges were just digging in to my quad really well. And again, just trying to activate the muscles around. And I was also doing, gosh, I, I was also doing the, uh, the hip bridges that Steve showed me on Sunday. So anyway, don't want to belabor the knee too much, but that is the update there. Okay, doubling, here we go. Why double? The simple answer is you double to increase the volume, the miles or kilometers that you are running in a given period of time. I've said it before, I'll say it right now. I think if you wanna really chase down a PR in the marathon, I think 70 miles a week is an amazing number to shoot for. Let's say you're working full time. Um, now for the, for the ladies out there, I would say 55 miles a week, okay? So if I was a coach and this runner came to me and said, Listen, I've been a runner for five years, 10 years. I'm, I'm mostly injury free. Um, I've been running 40 to 50 miles a week for a long time. I would basically invite them to consider increasing their volume just a little bit and to that sweet spot of 70 miles. For me, based on my experience, whenever I hit 70 miles a week, the fitness just really starts to come into form. So, um, so to get to that point from 40 to 50 miles a week to 70, Instead of, let's go with a seven day window, so one week, Monday to Sunday, instead of running seven times in seven days, you could run eight times in seven days or nine times in seven days, probably not 10 times. I, I'm trying to think if I know too many people to do that. Maybe a couple, I don't know too many. I, I recommend two days a week with a double. So that would be nine runs in seven days. Now, why would you do that? build that aerobic engine just a little bit more every time you go out for a run you're you're raising your heart rate you're getting that blood pumping you've heard me say so many times like your heart is slowly over time increasing in size and the power with which it can pump blood down to our muscles and our legs gets better and better the more that we run consistently over years not over months not over weeks definitely not over days over years and years and years so consistency is key and if you can mix in so now you're all busy all right you got to pick up the dry cleaning you got to go get groceries you got to drop the kids off at soccer you've got to uh you got to go down to a club event i don't know what whatever you're doing you are busy so how do you work a double into your schedule i think it's pretty neat when i see on strava the people that are posting run commute that's amazing now i work from my house um, so I can't do a run commute, but when I see people who post that, I'm just like, oh my goodness, that is so cool to be able to run to work and then run home and then run to work and run home. So that is one strategy to increase your volume. Uh, another strategy is if you're dropping your kids off at a, an event, a band practice, whatever, um, as they're at practice, go run, have shoes in the back of your car, always have running gear in the back of your car. That's my, I guess, maybe second tip of the day. Always have running gear in the back so you can go grab it, go get three miles in, go get four miles in. If you only have 45 minutes in the morning before you have to go catch a subway, go for a two mile run, a three mile run, just to raise that heart rate 
once before you get into the office for the day. So those are a couple tips. And for marathon training, I think it is, for me, I think it's critical. And I'm going for higher volumes, as you know. And so far, so good. Now, I guess one last caveat. Don't do doubles if you are new to running. Don't do doubles. I would say if you're in high school, I think your body is developing so much that I think one once a day is plenty, okay? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have my high school, if I was a coach, I wouldn't have my high school runners double. Um, and then what else? So uh, high school, new to running, and if you have a history of uh, injuries, definitely don't double, okay? So those are just a couple caveats to think about. All right, question of the day. How do you um, increase your volume while leading a busy life? So if at some point in your life, think back, all the veterans out there, think back, way, way back. Was there a moment where you knew, okay, I'm training for a marathon, I'm training for a 50 miler, I'm training for a 100 miler, I know I need to increase my volume, but I'm still really, really busy. How did you pull it off? What tips and tricks do you have? If you could share some tips down in the comments, that would be amazing. Thank you so much for hitting it up. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I hope you gleaned a little bit from that double discussion, and uh, we'll keep talking about this topic uh, in the future. And uh, gosh, it's a big one. It is a big one. Hope you had a great day. Onward and upward. I'm going inside. I got to go to bed after Dublin. Always got to go to bed after Dublin. All right, everyone. We're tossing it back to the last time we talked about doubling on the right, a big mountain run plus another run on the right. And then on the left, we'll throw it back to the aerobic engine blog where I talk about why it's important to build your aerobic engine first. There you go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.